every building tells a story, and Faneuil Hall is no different. The meeting place for revolutionary patriots, suffragettes, and abolitionists alike, Faneuil Hall has cemented itself in the Boston and American narrative as a beacon of civic pride, the cradle of liberty. But a group of national park rangers recently uncovered new layers to its namesake, Peter Faneuil's past, revealing that no historical figure or site is one-dimensional. Today, Peter Faneuil's gaze presides over the naturalization of thousands of America's newest citizens every year. But almost 300 years ago, Faneuil became one of Boston's wealthiest, helping build his immense fortune by trafficking in hundreds of enslaved Africans to America's shores. Faneuil Hall is no place for slavish hearts. Today, visitors can reenact the 1854 trial of Anthony Burns, which brought thousands to Faneuil Hall to protest the 1850 Fugitive Slave Act and made Boston a focal point in changing conversations around abolition. But more than a century prior, Peter Faneuil personally financed voyages to purchase human beings like Burns for his personal estate and as part of the larger slavery-based economy on which Boston built its foundations and prospered. In the halls where American patriots like Samuel Adams and the Sons of Liberty once fought for their freedoms and contested British rule, new voices are protesting the choice of having a slave trade profiteer like Peter Faneuil be the namesake of a site known for its role in the construction of the core American principles of liberty and justice. So, as old and new historical threads converge at this centuries-old central meeting place, it begs the question, what is the story of Boston that should be told? And who bears the responsibility of writing that narrative? <laughs>